Hello, and thank you so much for joining us on the Great Black Speakers YouTube channel. Today's speaker is Alvin Singh. Alvin is a strategic project manager at ARS Media Group. He is also the author of the book, Manage Your Web, a media strategist, a documentary producer. He's also worked with nonprofit organizations, media companies, and Fortune 500 companies, as well as small business owners. So today, Alvin will be talking to us a bit about business development, diversity, emerging markets, a little bit of technology and entrepreneurship. He'll also be talking about how he is working and producing a new full length documentary with the one and only Lead Belly. Lead Belly was just awarded a US postal stamp here in the United States. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. We'll also be talking about why speaking is important to um, Alvin and why he is a great black speaker. So go ahead and enjoy this interview. And remember, you can book Alvin Singh at greatblackspeakers.com. Alvin, tell me a little bit about how you kind of got into public speaking, and how you got into media as well. Yeah, no, uh, well, I first started off as a DJ. That was one of my first actual entrepreneur wow. enterprises. My sister at a young age, she said, you know, if you're going to go to school, you got to either learn how to cut hair or you got to learn how to DJ. And so <laughs> really? for me, I, I was a big music fan and I really liked music and vinyl records at the time. And so DJing became my, my you know, my first choice. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, what DJing did teach me was how to be professional. You know, although you're playing music at parties and different things or weddings and different events, you have to show up on time and you mm -hmm. also have to have a plan. So, you know, you just can't wing it necessarily, but you have to have a playlist. And so Definitely. I also carried that on with business and just like, you know, being prepared for business meetings and now with public speaking, what it is to me is just another way of picking up the mic. The thing is, um, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't an MC at, or, 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 you know, or someone that was a singer, but mm -hmm. now I'm someone that is, you know, with expertise and with experiences and, you know, and able to be a storyteller or a teacher on the stage. I love that. I love that. Being a teacher on the stage. That's, <clears throat> that's cool. Now, what are your speaking topics? Tell me some of your speaking topics. So a lot of my topics have to do with technology and uh, emerging trends that take place in technology. We live in a very information, big information age now. Um, and also too from technology. So there's a lot of trends and startups and where that part of the business of it is going. But then more so what excites me is the productivity part of it mm. is how people can be productive with all of these different social media networks and accounts and, and emails and things, but how to be productive in professional and personal lives. I mean, you know, so many of us have so many friends and followers, but we only hear from our friends <laughs> and I found for, uh, and our family members only but one or two times a year. Definitely. Uh, there's ways that you can do it to, to, you know, help you become someone that's more in tune and present with, you know, friends and family. Uh, another topic of mine that I discuss also too is entrepreneurship, particularly for young people. Um, I think that we're in such an interesting age where now uh, the technology is allowing people to set up their own online businesses or create products that can help solve you know different challenges and so and I, you the young people are always the most active they're the most engaging uh, and they're, they're able to you know find some of the solutions that i think many of us kind of uh don't want to take a risk for and so what I would like to do is uh, when I speak to, to these different audiences, whether it's colleges or high schools, is encourage that that spirit in them to um, to be able to become good entrepreneurs and, and kind of tie it in with a lot of historical figures. You know, a lot of people in the past where there are sports figures or people like Miriam McLeod uh, Bethune or Madam C.J. Walker and, mm -hmm. and how they can tie in to being uh, sort of the new trailblazers in today. Awesome. I love it. So you seem like a, a millennial yourself. Again, if I could say the word. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm a 70s baby. So I don't know. Right? Oh my gosh, you look so yeah. young. <laughs> Good boy. Um, so that's awesome. I love it. You look so young. Thank um, you. So what does being a great black speaker mean to you? Oh, that's a 
good question. To me, it, again, it has a historical tie. It's not so much about today because we are in a, such a lucky way of so many different people of, uh, of African descent are able to speak on so many different things. So now we have actors and a lot of the, the people that's in Great Black Speakers on directory is from mm -hmm. actors to mm -hmm. activists to intellectuals to professors mm -hmm. to sports people to you know, uh, even people who like Tuskegee Airmen, I think, is one of the people I think that's in uh, yeah. one of the lists. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, for me, what it represents is someone that's able to tell a story mm -hmm. that can help and encourage, you know, people based on the topic that they're dealing with. And to be a great Black speaker it, <laughs> it's, it's something that falls in line to, mm -hmm. you know, our great history in, in America. Mm -hmm from you know people in the early of 20th century to today and it's something that i take very seriously and i don't think that i'm like going to be the best but uh i, I definitely <laughs> hope that i can add value well you're on the platform so you're definitely <laughs> the best uh you gotta be a great, uh, gotta black, be a great black speaker, speaker to be on the great black speakers platform right we don't just accept anyone we definitely go through um a rigorous um set selection process so um it's all good so did you expect that um you know you would come into the space and you would kind to kind of take off the way you did or what did you expect moving into this um, one of the expectations was to be able to also see the growth in the company itself so Mm -hmm. Not necessarily is it just getting speaking engagements, but also what are some of the ways that can help the speakers brand themselves? Um, so, yeah. you know, it's good to just get the call and go pick up the mic, but also to mm -hmm. what are the other ways of kind of curating all of these different uh, speaking engagements or, and then maybe how some of the people that attended can further engage with you. So if you're an author, maybe an is there a way for them to buy your book? Or if you're a musician, is there an album that you can, you know, uh, work with? And then also, too, what I also expect is the, the, the connections that come after this. Uh, for me, uh, it's not so much of what I have to say on the stage, but what are the things that people in the audience have to say uh, themselves? And so I really more so is the part that I look for is getting off the stage and shaking hands because that's kind of where, you know, the one-on-one -on -one interaction really is. Yeah, and it's it's a total rush, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> it really truthfully is. It's it's really great when you attack someone's life and they come up to you and go, wow, you know, you made me see something completely different. And I know for you, um, since you mentioned that you speak to um, the younger generation, mm -hmm. how does that affect you? How do you feel um, empowered or if you could give us just an, a situation or an experience that you had that was really profound for you and you just went, wow, you know, I definitely need to continue doing this. Yeah, well, one for me was actually an audience that I didn't even expect to be an audience. And it was a group of school children in Malawi, uh, which oh, was wow. a village, uh, I mean, like two hours from the main city. Uh, mm -hmm. And we were doing a nonprofit a project to bring a water pump to the village. A uh, lot of women walk two hours, three hours just to get, you know, water to, you know, for cooking and cleaning and, mm -hmm. and different things mm -hmm. like that. And so um, when we were able to raise the money to build this pump, they asked me to speak about it. And I, you know, I humbly didn't know what else I can say other than, yeah. you know, um, I'm happy that it's there. But uh, they actually <laughs> made the the appearance, and they made me feel, you know, very humble by their gratitude for, for them to have it. Uh, and some of them that didn't even speak, you know, um, even English. You know, they had their own language, yeah. but they had a translator uh, who, mm -hmm. when I spoke, he gave the words. And so, one thing that I learned from that was that mm -hmm. I had to slow myself down so that I can speak in a way mm -hmm. that they understand me, uh, which yeah. then helped me to like cut my content by 60%. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. whatever I had to say you had to connect. And, yeah, um, and I actually really enjoyed that. And it, it really let me know that, okay, so 
you know, getting with people who are educated or people who uh, you yeah. know, have so many different experiences and maybe going, you know, to the next level, what can I do to, to kind of give them that kind of encouragement as well? Wow. And so it really made you drill in on the power of your words, right? It did. It did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because I'm sure you were probably like, okay, don't say um a lot. <laughs> And also, you, too, you know, we, we, we live in a digital age and all of the technology, yeah. people's attention spans is very short. So really you have short, to be definitely. able to say something in a quick punchline so that mm -hmm. they understand it. And, and just grab their emotion and get their attention. Right. Yeah, definitely. Right. I totally agree. Completely agree. Um, now, what is your number one uh, tip for balancing different business ideas and different business ventures? Yeah, so one of my number one tips is uh, to be able to delegate. Uh, right now, you have Huge to, one. yeah, you have to be able to think what are the main decisions or the top priorities that I need to take care of, rather than trying to take care of all the things on your to-do list. What are the top that require your most attention? And then mm -hmm. the remaining of it, could it be delegated if you were to spend, you know, 20 minutes or 15 minutes to teach someone else to do it? Uh, yeah. Because ultimately you want to be able to go to another decision, decision that requires your real time of thinking. Uh, so yeah. if it's, you know, paying for the parking ticket or, you know, taking something to the laundromat, you know, what could be something that you can say, I'm not going to do that now uh, to keep yeah. myself busy, but rather what is the one thing that I can do that's going to make my day feel much better? Uh, and so for business owners, they're constantly juggling. A lot of entrepreneurs, they're playing uh, the lawyer, the salesman, the marketer, yeah. and the manager, oh, yeah. and they're creating their own websites, and they create mm -hmm. so much content um, for that, yeah. which you want to do is, again, say, what are the top three things that I that if, I, if it wasn't me doing it, then it would crash. But if it's something mm -hmm. that someone else can do, then could you spend more time teaching that person to do it? And that can be another, you know, relative or that can be an intern or, you know, there's even people that you can find that can even do it uh, online virtually. Absolutely. I completely agree. Now, do I always follow it? No, but I completely agree. <laughs> That may be why I agree so much. Um, so for you, um, tell me, you know, a bit of what you speak about um, as far as technology wise. Give us a give us a little bit of a taste, just a tad bit of what you would speak or what you would say at one of your speaking events, what you would speak about. Yeah. So one good story. My, I was little as a, as a um, pre middle school and I was visiting my grandmother's house and on the wall there was a, uh, a huge document that was framed and in, mm -hmm. when i looked at it it was actually a prison part i said you oh. know grandma when grandma, when did granddad go to jail and she said no that's you know from your great uncle he was a blues singer uh, by the name of lead belly and wow. lead belly's story uh is that he uh, uh, sung his way out of prison twice once in louisiana and wow. once in texas and this was during huh. 1930s and the 1940s where mm -hmm. you know uh the justice system was not that easy to men of color and so uh, mm -hmm. as i got older i started to learn more about his influence and his history and uh his legacy and uh, mm -hmm. from that uh dealing with today what we have done is take a lot of his archive materials of his music and some of the letters that he wrote to other uh, musicians and digitize it um, so oh, that is now in some of the museums or it's in a photo book that they actually did mm -hmm. him. And what that taught me that I, that I talked to audiences about is that the story continues. You know, it comes from mm -hmm. something that, you know, he himself may have learned years ago growing up and he's singing these folk songs and he's singing mm -hmm. them as work songs and he's telling the stories. Uh, and then, mm -hmm. you know, years later, the the equipment and the technology allowed it to be available on CD. And then now that yeah. CDs are gone, it's now available on Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> now that, you know, and now also too, there's mm -hmm. thousands of people 
that are singing their own redemption of his songs on YouTube, you know, with their guitar and it's their version, you know, from from you know girls and, uh, and school girls in Japan to you know guys wow. in France and Iceland uh, who were just singing his songs. So that's amazing. That is amazing. to me is that that kind of connection that we have of storytelling from the old age to the new age mm -hmm. and and what are the things that we can learn from that and, and, and also to what are the things that um, maybe you can as you're an entrepreneur yourself monetize from that you know uh, would would you want to do a documentary of some of his music and how would you tie it into your stories today and so yeah. that's that's what I was well how have you about. how have you tied it into your story how have you continued his song have you continued? His uh, no, I'm not a musician myself. Only I said the DJ and was only turntables I touch. But uh, <laughs> for me, it was the nonetheless <laughs> you're continuing, right? Nonetheless, you are continuing. That may be in your speaking. It may be in the poetic way that you translate mm -hmm. the messages to, like you said, um, in a country where you don't speak the language, you're able to mm -hmm. then have those words be impactful because of your legacy and because of the history that you have there in your ancestors. Um, so how are you continuing that song on in yourself and carrying that through to your Yeah, no, your that's legacy? a good point. Um, uh, pertaining to Lead Belly, it's, we worked on a documentary uh, about his life and, and interviewed some of his friends to, to get in that document, but also to, for me, I, I learned more so is that you should be able to speak to anyone and you should have a content that reaches anyone. And as a musician, he did songs for children. He did songs for adults. Um, never did he look at his life to say, oh, it's only, you know, adult songs. I can't do yeah. to children. Um, <laughs> and never did he force himself to be around adults because he knew, you know, a lot of stories that adults could relate to. And so yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I, I try to think of, you know, what would be something that someone that's young and audience, youngest person in audience could relate to and actually come away with? And what was something that the oldest person um, would, would, you know, also come away with something as well? Awesome. I love it. Yeah, that's that's really, really great. Now I'm going to have to go and look him up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so. We talked a lot about your, we talked about your most memorable experience. We talked about a little bit about kind of where your legacy is going and kind of the platform that you're building and all that good stuff. But I want to know from you, how do you kind of use uh, social media? Um, and you talked a bit about the digital space as well, but I'd like you to expand on that a little bit as well. How do you use those mediums together to um, elevate your speaking topics? Yeah, so for me, it, uh, a lot of question and answer. Um, I'll start with a lot of questions to just see what other people are thinking out there. Uh, also, maybe before an event, if it's a conferences or if it's different expos, there's already a hashtag. And in that hashtag, there's certain things you can see that people are looking to try to better understand, maybe from previous mm -hmm. speakers or maybe from the ones that's coming up. Definitely. And what I do from that is this is just market research to see who's in the room mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and what are there, where some of the people coming from, different parts of the country, different parts of the world. Uh, also, too, for me, with the way social media is afterwards is that's mm -hmm. the long conversation is being yeah. able to connect with people and then say, mm -hmm. well, if you want to take this further, here's a way to reach me or here's a way to follow my email um, newsletter uh, or, you know, listen to my uh, webinar or mm -hmm. Facebook live at, at a certain time. And, mm -hmm. and that's what's good about that is that what Great Black Speakers offers is a platform for you to speak now and then actually yeah. carry it on for later. With social exactly. media now, we, we're able to do that. Um, but mm -hmm. you have to kind of do it wisely and strategically so that it's not coming across sporadic or very spammy and salesperson mm -hmm. type, but very authentic and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, something that people can, can, you know, grasp from. Okay. And so I think this is going to be about my last question. I do have another one that I want to sneak in there. <laughs> okay. <But laughs> one last one. Um, so what do you love about being a speaker? What do you absolutely love about it? Um, what I love about it is actually 
being able to share some of the things that I've learned. Um, mm. and, and because in sharing your experiences, yeah, on. sharing my experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Also, what I love about it is that it's an opportunity to meet people. It's a great mm -hmm. way to meet someone because I come up to a lot of speakers that I meet and I and I like to you know talk to them and ask them further yeah. questions and so. Yeah. And a lot of times, some of them say, "Well, I, I never knew that," and you know, send me this article, and mm -hmm. and I would send it to them, and you can see that it later down the line is something that that was helpful for them. And so for me, yeah. it's just a two-way communication. It's building a, those relationships. It's a right? big thing, big thing. Mm -hmm. Saying thank mm -hmm. you enough is, is, is something that I want to be able to do. Definitely, right? <laughs> that's a big one. That's a huge one. The saying thank you. So, like I said, I have one more I want to sneak in. So okay. I'm gonna sneak it in on you. Um, so you talked a bit about um, you know, your your um ancestor. Is it lead? Lead butter, lead belly, lead belly, lead belly. Um, and I see lead better, <laughs> the blues man said, okay. Um, so you talked a bit about that and you said that you don't have any musical skill yourself <laughs> other than the DJing, is right. that correct? Correct. But I also see that you do a lot of photography and you also do some consulting as well. So where does all of that kind of land from you with being in all of these different uh, markets? Like you said, um, your ancestor here, a lad belly, he was actually able to cross over from adult to, um, you know, the child population and make songs for both of those. But how do you find yourself meeting um, the corporations, the nonprofits, the universities, and the entrepreneurship, the technology, all of those different realms? How do you find yourself fitting in between all of those? Well, for it's me, kind of a loaded question. No, well, <laughs> it, 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 I understand it. For me, they all are seeking the same exact thing. We're in just not less than ten thousand days of the internet even existing. I think it's like mm. eight thousand days total or something. Yeah, like that. So, yeah, it hasn't been that long. And it's, it's been that long. such a gold rush and it's such a new enterprise yeah. for education, like you said, with the universities and teachers mm -hmm. to expand conversations or to yeah. learn how to do newer things uh, for education. So a lot yeah. of them consult, asked, you know, what should we do? I would like to start an online course. How can mm. I do that? Uh, yeah. And businesses are also trying to learn different ways of storytelling. You know, for so many years, they counted on television, television and radio. And yeah, radio. traditional methods, yeah. And now mm -hmm. that they're learning that maybe we can find an influencer to talk directly to this market that we know that we want to reach. And so a lot of times they have such a huge uh, division mm -hmm. to work on this, but they also need someone with an outside perspective to come in and, 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 and advise them or maybe talk to them about different methods. And for me also too, uh, I also have a unique experience of living in South Africa, which uh, a developing nation is another uh, perspective outside of mm -hmm. what we would say, you know, in in America. And so, Definitely. and those those consumers use the exact same products, but in a different way. And oh, wow. too often we think, how can we make something for everybody when in reality mm -hmm. everybody uses it the same way? Uh, it's very cultural spe specific. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so, uh, yeah. and, and that's why this that's is why such a good time because, because everyone is still willing to learn as much as they can. And so, how I tie mm -hmm. all of that in is this: this all media, and it's all communication. Yeah. And, yep. and yep. I'm a, like I said, I'm a person who collected vinyl records. I wrote letters. <laughs> I used telephone. Yeah, yeah. I used uh -huh. Telephone book and. Mm -hmm. I, I've driven to another city without. Oh, so you were there when the busy signal, huh? Right. You were there when the busy signal happened. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and I've visited cities without having yeah. a phone, and you're, wow. you know, you're meeting a, you know, friend and an aunt or uncle, and mm -hmm. you're actually going to the house, and knocking on the door, hoping that they're there. And so, <laughs> uh, and nowadays, very true. We, so many of these things available to us, mm -hmm. but we're still losing some of the interaction and connections that the can human make human connection. Yeah, and that's, and that's mm -hmm. where a lot of focus that I want to go on because that's what's going to make it your life more rich, and exactly. that's what's going to make your yeah. business better. Definitely, so that's uh, how I tie all of that in. 
So human, human, human interaction makes your business better. Tie it into the digital and technology and then you're just ready to go, right? All of it That's works it. together in one ecosystem. So I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, so bringing in a little bit of that old with some of the new. Um, so thank you so much for doing this with us. I appreciate you being here and hanging out with me. Um, so tell us where we can find you. I, of course, find you here on Great Black Speakers. So you definitely want to check out greatblackspeakers.com to book Alvin. But Alvin, go ahead and mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about where we can find you um, and anything else, any other closing thoughts you'd like to leave with us. Okay. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Bokito, B-O-O-K-I-D-O. That's just a name from the old website that I have, and I just okay. always kept it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Or you can actually text me. I have a phone number that's dedicated just for nice. it's 615 uh, 645 If you text me, it, it will give you a, a free copy of my book as well. Wonderful. So that, that's actually something that I use when I'm speaking at the event. Is, Oh, nice. Tell everyone to pull out your phone, send mm -hmm. me a text message, and it'll send you an auto reply and like a link to my book. Awesome. Um, Love it. Technology and all its splendor, yeah. huh? That's right. <laughs> uh, on a final note and closing, I'll yeah. just say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for everyone that's watching and listening. Uh, thank you to Great Black Speakers for the great platform that you have mm -hmm. and being able to uh, allow people like myself and others who are trying to you know tell so much of what we've gone through and Definitely. what we've uh, experienced and i think it's a great opportunity for this to be the, at the time that we are in because there's so many different mm -hmm. ways that everyone wants to listen to each other Definitely. Uh, and i would say just just manage your web you know watch your digital footprint um uh, always what happens online stays online Definitely. <laughs> and um just reach out to me i gave hold you hold on you can't enough. drop that and then not explain it so hold on <laughs> tell us about the digital footprint please explain yeah so as you're all consuming all of this media mm -hmm. we we have to just change our passwords every so often mm -hmm. uh turn off the internet if you're not using your laptop uh, a lot of security tech things that's kind of a little technical but it's also uh, common sense yeah you know yeah. I, I look at it as to say you know you wouldn't left your childhood diary book i remember when they used to have the little lock yeah. on them or something. Yeah. a lot of girls had those the guys oh, yeah. didn't yeah but <laughs> you wouldn't leave it open you know just for anyone mm -hmm. to read and so mm -hmm. you had a habit of closing it and putting it away and, and yeah. hiding it so Definitely. these are the same things when we have our laptops open mm -hmm. make sure you close it yeah uh, Make sure uh, you zip it up if you're showing sharing any pictures on <laughs> on social media and all of mm. these different things because you don't want something to get out there and whether it's a business yeah. or whether you know your professional setting and you're you know stuck trying to figure out how to delete it or take it away. It's just best not to do it and always be mm. cautious of that. Yeah, because what from from what I understand, your digital footprint can stay there for years and really actually forever for eternity, right? <laughs> yeah, but, so things I mean, that you do at 18 and you're posting, you know, can come back to haunt you when you're 25, 26, looking for a job or trying to start your own business and someone Googles you and you pop up like, hey, there's a problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that can be a little bit of a problem. Um, so you definitely want to watch what you post, right? So, yes, yeah. send me a text. I'll send you a free copy of the book, 615-645-3889. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And you get a free copy of the book and you can learn a lot Tell more. Tell me the name of the book again, I'm sorry. It's called Manage Your Web. Nice. Or the website is manageyourweb.info, I-N-F-O. Awesome. Awesome. So he will give you all that you need to manage your web. Thank you so much, Alvin, for joining us here on the Great Black Speakers digital platform. Uh, so be sure to go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. Go to greatblackspeakers.com. There you'll be able to see all of our blogs, all of the speakers that we have available for you. You'll also be able to take a look at some of the um, digital content that we have and our videos should be linked there as well. So you'll be able to take a look at the speakers we have available, some of their blogs, the videos they have available of their past events, and book a speaker there as well. So 
uh, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. We can go ahead and jump into your inbox and provide you information there. And that way you won't even have to visit our site. It'll be direct, directly delivered to you in your email uh, email box there. So subscribe to our, our YouTube channel for all of the greatness that we have for you. Uh, great life speakers, shaping minds, one speech at a time, a time to get out there and make history happen. I'll see you guys later. All right, take care.